My name is Professor Omar Ino. I come from the US and Canada. Uh, I teach history. I was asked to translate what the gentleman has said. And uh, I ask you to excuse me if sometimes. I lose breath because I'm not feeling well. I'm, I'm somehow sick. So, uh, and I'm fasting at the same time. So you bear with my difficulties of breathing properly. What the gentleman has seen is among the Somali Bantu elders who have attended all the Somali political uh, meetings and gatherings starting from a place called the Hamde in Djibouti. So he was talking about the discrimination, uh, the inhumanity, the lack of uh, uh, inclusion that the Bantus, Somali Bantus were imposed by the other Somalis about the political system. Not only the political system, I will add a little bit. Somalis are our brothers. We are Somalis. They are Somalis. We are the natives of that country. Somalis came to Somalia. They migrated and they found us there. And uh, like I said the other day in a meeting, the Somalis always assert that they are from Arabia. They are Arabs. Particularly, their genealogy goes to the genealogy of Prophet Muhammad. That means a tribe called Quraysh. That is the tribe they claim to be original. So, for the, so my brother Somalis to say, the Somali Bantus do not belong to Somalia. When they themselves were, are claiming to be Arabs who came from Arabia, and Somalia happens to be within Africa, so that is technically, Africa belongs to Africa. Not Africa does not belong to Africa. <laughs> the problem that the Somali Bantus are facing in Somalia, that the gentleman has emphasized, it, is lack of education. They are not included in the educational system. They are included, but up to higher class level, up to higher school level. Once you go to university level, level they are, this, the Bantus are excluded. They are not included in the economic aspect. They are oppressed on, on, on every loophole where they could generate or create economy. Once you create economy, then you can create power. They know that, and that's why they are stopped. The third one is the uh, political system. And there's a reason why the Somalis do not want the Bantu to participate in the political system. Uh, it was in my note that I was going to talk about it later on. I was told in a conference in the United States by Somali scholars, but in a, in a, in a, in a, in a private way, listen, there's a reason why we are oppressing the Bantu. And I said, but why? We, you found us there. You migrated from wherever you came. We are the owners, the autochthons of that land. And they told us, our worries, to be honest with you, they told me, once the Somali Bantus are included in the political system, if they are given a ministerial position, if they are given a higher level prominent position, they will be they will be going outside to, to other world, to other African countries, and uh, the African countries will be knowing that they are some of their brothers who are here. We are worried of the connection that will be created between any leader, a Bantu leader, 
and the rest of Africa, which finally it might be beginning today. So, I think there's no need of being scared. Somalia belongs to too many groups. Everybody has a region. This is the main question that you should ask yourself, which the gentleman has mentioned. Why is it the war in Somalia, why is it confined only in one region? <coughs> there is no war in the north, there is no war in central. Why is the war confined only in the south? <coughs> this is a question the international community should ask, and we emphasize, we explain to them, but you know the problem is, if you are not having a, a, an army, a, a military wing, the international community is not interested. Now, the reason why Somalia is subdivided into three regions, North, Central, and South. The North have declared independence. They seceded. The Central have declared regional autonomy, Buntalan. The war is in the South, only in the South. And who is fighting in the South? The very people who have their own regions <coughs> came to the South to fight, while the owners of the South are just witnessing. Now, what makes South important? South does not have petrol. South does not have diamond. South does not have uh, some other expensive minerals or resources. But the South has a fertile land, an arable land. The rest of Somalia feeds from the South. So whoever controls South is likely to control the rest of Somalia. While the Southerners are the Bantus. The Bantus are predominantly agricultural people. They, they are not nomads. But when, this is when I will be talking later on with uh, some Kenyan officials. I somehow blame the Kenyan academia. Because we have written, it is in every way, we have written about the Somali Bantus who are being discriminated, who are considered slaves in Somalia, who live in a subhuman life. We wrote, it is in the web, it's in everywhere. But this, the, the Kenyan academia did not inform the Kenyan government that there are brothers who are living there, who are being considered subhuman, who are being considered uh, 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 less than, 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 than what they, they, they should be getting. Unlike reversing the situation, the Somalis who are in Kenya, NFT and all these, they are having ministers. They are having permanent secretaries. They are having a huge hand in the government, in the Kenyan government. We do not get that respect in Somalia. We are called, we are 0.5. We are not full, fully represented in the Somalia constitution or in the Somali society. We are not fully represented. We are represented half. Are the Somalis here represented half in the Kenyan parliament? No. They are fully represented. So, when NMD was struggling to, for some reasons, for some political reasons, it is Somalia who came for their rescue. But when we are struggling for political reasons, we are on our own. And it is that is where the sad situation comes from. In Somalia, there are Burundis who are Bantus who are dying. There are Ugandans who are Bantus who are dying. There are other groups from other African countries who are dying for the sake of the very people who are oppressing their, their brothers. It is a sad situation.
<laughs> the reason I blame the Kenyan academia, they did not inform the public. They did not inform their people. It is written, it's everywhere. Written by Enrico Cerulli, Catherine Bestman, Virginia Luling, uh, 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 Casanelli, uh, uh, Robert Hess. There are so many historians in Kenya. What were they doing? Why didn't they reveal this? We wrote, me and my brother, we wrote so many. This is one of the articles. I wish I brought the book we wrote. We have, it's called An Anti-Apartheid in the Horn of Africa. The case of the Somali Bantu Jerez, that's the title of the book. An Anti-Apartheid. There is apartheid in Somalia. I have been threatened a million times. Thank God I'm not, I don't live in Kenya. If I live in Kenya, maybe I would have been gone by now. I live in Canada. Because I'm a human rights activist. And my brothers, Somalis, they don't want, they don't like me, and I don't, I don't care whether somebody likes me or not. I just want justice. When the statistics were made 
and took it to the statisticians for, uh, at my university, Portland State University, and I asked them, how can human beings develop or grow? And they took all the, the, the statistic, statistic codes and numbers and whatnot, and the Bandus came exactly like any other group in Somalia. So Somalia should have been subdivided into five, not 4.5. They are not, let the Somalis claim they are 10 million, the Bantus are 2 million. They are just like, if not more, I believe they are more. So, the problem is that the Bantus, Somali Bantus are facing because they did not arm themselves. See, I do not encourage that. But the problem is, how long will you stay under life, under a, a, a dog's life? How long will you continue? When you can't have education, when you are not included in the decision making, when your wife or your children are being raped, when your farm, which is your livelihood, is taken away from you, when you are working in your own farm at a gunpoint, how long can you live this kind of life? And that is why these elders came. They are saying, enough is enough. We cannot take it anymore. We told the international community from left, right, center, back, and front. Nobody wants to listen. You know what they tell me? When I meet these officials, whether it is United States, whether it is United Nations, whether it is European Union, Privately, when you talk to them, they tell you, but you guys, you know, you guys, you are not, uh, you know, you are not, uh, but they don't want to say the word. You are not armed. But they don't want to say. They go around, they beat around the bush. You see? So, I, 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 I have been struggling I have been fighting and writing for the past 20 years, over 20 years. <coughs> so now, we have come to the conclusion that the, the system they used to the Somalis, it was like the colonial system. Divide and rule. They divided the Bantus. Some Bantus, you discuss with them secretly what to do, because, you know, I, 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 I'm expert in slavery. He goes to his master, whatever you discuss, that you wanted to do tomorrow, because he wants to be given, he, he wants to be tapped on the shoulder. He runs at night and tells him, you know, this is what we talked. Tomorrow we are going to do this. The, the mama did not do that. They died and they got their independence. It doesn't matter whoever you are liberating from yourself. Oppression is an oppression. Whether it is a black oppression, whether it is a white oppression, whether it's a green and purple oppression. Once you are oppressed, you are oppressed. Once you need liberation and independence, you need liberation and independence and equality. Thank you.